Deploying the next generation firewall using a virtual wire is the fastest way to get it into the network and with this establish full visibility and control. In a moment, I will explain you the concept and some use cases. If this is your first time here, I'm Lars von Consigas. We call ourselves the Palo Alto Networks Experts because the next generation firewall is our passion. It's what we do all day every day, migrating firewalls, providing managed services and most important, implementing security best practices. When I started to work with this box in 2010, barely anyone knew about Palo Alto Networks. But as an engineer, I felt that this solution will change the world of cybersecurity. And yes, today we know it did big time, because it's one of the few security solutions that can truly secure your network. However, there's a caveat. You need to set it up in the right way in order to be effective. Because while it's awesome, it's not a magic box. So over the years, we became a professional service partner for Palo Alto Networks, as well as one of a few elite authorized training centers. And with working in the field for so many years and being a trainer, I would like to share my experience with you. So over the next couple of weeks and months, we release new videos and core concepts explaining the fundamental workings of the next generation firewall, starting with the trend landscape, then deployment methods, NAT, AppID, SSL decryption, VPNs, and many more. So follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter to stay up to date. But now let's get started with virtual wire. The principal idea behind a virtual wire is that we can integrate the firewall transparently into the network, means we really, like the name says, simulate a wire, um, and with this pass traffic through at layer two. So the way we do this is, obviously here we have our interface, and the first thing is usually what we have to do is define interface type. So we define this interface as a virtual wire interface, and the same on the outside. And now we kind of need to combine them, and we combine them with this, what we call kind of a virtual wire instance. Okay. So now, obviously, this is supposed to be a wire, means all the traffic comes in here has to go out on the other side, and respectively the same thing, every single that comes in here has to be sent out on the other side. So with this, you know, by definition, a virtual wire can always have only two interfaces, and it has to have at least always two interfaces, okay? So with this, you know, it's a pretty uh, simple setup. Now, in the setup, what we shouldn't forget about is our, our, our zones. So also here, we now have uh, our zones. So let's say here we have on the inside we have our office zone, and on the outside we have our internet zone. And it's a very good example because with this you, know, you can see actually the power of zones, right? Because you know on the firewall we define policies and we always define them in the same way, from a zone to a zone. And with this, you know, even so we have you know loads of different deployment methods on the firewall. We don't really need to care about this kind of interface uh, stuff on the bottom, right? Because well, with our policies we just you know do from zone to zone um, and have it all always in, in, in the same way. Now, what are the use cases for virtual wires? Now, you should always use it if you kind of, again, need very quickly need to integrate the firewall uh, without it, you can kind of change the network infrastructure at layer three, okay? That's really kind of the most common use case. So the effectively the use case is use virtual wire whenever you cannot use layer three, right? So layer three should be our, our principal way how to integrate uh, a firewall into a network, right? And whenever we cannot do this, then usually virtual wire is a very good alternative to it. Um, where you shouldn't use virtual wire, you shouldn't use it as kind of a part of a migration process. So let's say in this case, you know, you have an existing firewall and you put uh, as part of the migration the, the new firewall in front just to see what is going on. Um, now, th this kind of, it can be a valid approach, but the reason I do not recommend it is that Practically, what I've seen really happening in real life is that uh, doing something like this is just delaying the overall migration project because then, you know, the firewall is in and kind of the job is kind of half done, right? And then with this, it always kind of, you know, leads away the kind of the focus on the project of getting the firewall migrated, right? That's why I usually don't like um, th this approach. But again, um, migration uh, strategies, we actually going to talk about as well later on in, in, in another module. 
And by the way, if you're interested in security best practices for Palo Alto Networks, then check out the blog on our webpage. Here in the best practice section, you can download this worksheet with over 120 best practices for the next generation firewall. And very soon, we will also launch a security best practice training with a lot of videos explaining all of these security best practices in detail. So if you're interested, then sign up to our mailing list and we will let you know as soon as this free training is available.